All right, the next pro tip that I want to cover is splitting out text strings using text to columns. Now, if you have data that's stored as either a text file, a TXT, or a separated value file like a CSV, comma separated values, then you can use text to column tools within Excel to split those values into columns and rows. In other words, you can convert it into a tabular format that you can then use for analysis. So I'm going to show you a couple options here. Option one, if your data looks something like this, you have a TXT file. Right now I'm viewing it in Notepad. What you can do is simply open that text file from Excel to launch the text to column wizard. This will walk you through all the steps and then load that data delimited out into rows and columns. The second option is to open a CSV file into Excel. And what you'll see is something like this, where all of the data lives in column A. It's just these really long strings of text condensed into that single column. And in cases like that, where the data lives in column A in Excel, all you need to do is use the text to column tool from the data menu, and you'll get to the same option, the same user interface, where you can determine settings like specifying the delimiter, defining any text qualifiers like quotation marks, and formatting or excluding columns right there within the dialog box. Either direction that you go, you're going to end up in the same place, which is something like this, a properly formatted tabular data set that you can work with in Excel. So a couple common use cases here. First and foremost, transforming raw text-based data into properly formatted tabular layouts for analysis, either in Excel or other uh, data analysis tools. And then second, splitting text strings without having to use any sorts of formulas or functions. So let's hop into our pro tip workbook in Excel and give this a go. All right, so if you're following along with the course, go ahead and open up the Excel pro tips workbook and you can find the text to columns blue tab either by scrolling through the tabs or as always clicking the table of contents, finding that text to columns demo and clicking the link to jump straight to it. And here you'll see data that was sourced from a CSV file. And what that means is that it's loading the data into a single column. There's nothing in columns B, C, D, E. It's just basically compressing all the information into a single text string in that one column. And what we need to do is tell Excel to break this data out into columns defined by the positioning of each of these commas, which in this case is our delimiter. So to do this, I'm going to select the entire column A containing all of our data, head to the Data tab, and click Text to Columns. Now this opens up this wizard, this dialog box, that allows us to customize our settings in order to break this data out properly into columns. This is the CSV example. We would have arrived at this exact same dialog box had we pointed or navigated to a text file on our desktop, for instance. So from here, we can determine what type of data we're working with. In this case, delimited. We have a character, in this case, a comma that separates each field. So we can go ahead and press next. Make sure that your delimiter is not set to tab or anything else. This is a comma separated field. You can choose to treat consecutive commas, consecutive delimiters as one. In this case, we don't want that option. We can keep the default text qualifier uh, to quotation marks. And you can see this preview here that's showing how the delimiter is going to break out our columns. And because we have column headers right there in the first row, it's pretty easy to spot check and confirm that this is indeed breaking out the data in the way that we'd expect. So from here, let's go ahead and press next. In this view, we can actually apply formatting to these columns or exclude a column entirely if we don't want to load it into columns. So 99% of the time, general is going to be the right fit. It's going to allow Excel to convert fields that it recognizes as numbers to numbers, date values to dates, and any remaining values to text. That will almost always get the job done. Uh, one thing to note that can sometimes be helpful, if you receive data that contains dates in a different unusual format from your local settings or locale, you can use this date option to force that date into a different format that your version of Excel will recognize. Other than that, most of the time, this will give you exactly what you need just by using the general data format. So our destination is cell A1 in this worksheet. That sounds fine. Let's go ahead and press finish. And there you have it. We've broken out 
that one single string that had existed in column A into individual columns all the way out through column O. And now our data is in a format that we can easily load into tools like pivot tables or the data model for further analysis. Now, a couple of quick warnings when you're using this text to columns tool. First and foremost, if you have values that already existed in these columns, B, C, D, E, F, this process that we just went through would overwrite those values. In other words, we wouldn't push those values out to columns P, Q, R. It would simply overwrite them. So generally speaking, make sure there's nothing in the cells or the columns to the right of your raw source data before you use that text to columns tool to break it out. And then second, you're going to want to be very, very sure that your data is in the proper format and that you don't have issues like missing delimiters or blank values. And I'm going to show you why that's an issue here. I'm going to press control Z twice to get back to my original format. Now let's just look at uh, row two here. And what I'm going to do is actually just delete the name of the app, which is the second column, Pac-Man Premium. And if I delete it, but leave the space between the two commas and press OK. Now if we go through that same text to columns process, next, comma, next, finish. See, that's OK because we have a blank app name where I deleted it, but every other field is organized into its proper columns. I'm going to press undo again three more times. The issue is if you have cases like this, where one of your delimiters or commas doesn't even exist. Now, if we go through that process one final time, text to columns, next, next, and finish. Now we've got an issue because that second row doesn't align with the others. Everything from the right of column A has shifted to the left because of that missing delimiter. So as you can see, seemingly minor issues like one missing comma can actually create pretty major issues with the structure of your resulting data set. So let's go ahead and undo that change. Undo again, undo. And now that we have our app name back, we're back in our original format. Let's go ahead and run through it one final time. It will keep the settings that we had been using. Press finish. And there you have it. Now we've got a properly structured tabular data set. So there you go, text to columns.